So your science experiments, you can run them once per biome, basically. So generally speaking, that would mean like doing it in the mountains and the desert and the grasslands and the shore is a separate biome, which is great. What's interesting is around the Kerbal Space Center, each one of these buildings is basically a biome. So you can sort of science near there. And it's a great time to start testing out possible ideas for, um, for rover design but also doing some structural stress tests. So we are gonna go over to the space plane hangar instead. And this is like the vehicle assembly building, except you build sideways because you're theoretically making planes. We're not making planes. This is going to be um, the inertial, no, the rotational structure test vehicle. Oh, we can actually type that all in. Excellent. So the rotational structure test vehicle. So this is going to be our command pod, which is going to have someone in it. In fact, I'm going to preload a scientist in here. We're going to have a music symbol. First scientist in the list. Congratulations. You are going to fly this mission. So we're going to give you a science junior. This is materials. We're testing out different materials. And what we're going to do is we're going to roll them around and see how they stay. We're going to put another one in the front. So your some of your devices have something called um, reaction wheels. Basically gyros in there that allow you to turn your object um, internally. It uses electricity, but you can rotate that way. The other way to do it is to use um, uh, RCS, reaction control systems, which are little tiny, tiny mini rockets out the side to sort of psh, 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 to turn you in different ways. Um, but this thing can roll like this, and it'll roll from the center because that's where the reaction is. So we're basically using the two uh, material bays at Science Labs. And then what we can do is say on the back side, we'll go and hit X for symmetric, uh, symmetric, symmetry mode. We're going to go ahead and put a couple of goo cans on the back. And on the front, we can put a magnetometer. I can never say the word. Magneti science thing on the front. There we go. So this is our rotational structure test vehicle uh, piloted by Music Symbol. We're going to go ahead and save that and hit launch. So this is going to put us on the launch pad. No, sorry. On the, um, the landing strip. Takeoff thing. Airstrip, I don't know, whatever. This thing, where you make planes go from. So, it's gonna put us here, and we got some science to do here right away. Again, I could manually click anything. Crew report, again, we can get a crew report from uh, the runway over here. Reporting at the runway, good thing there's not a lot of traffic because I don't think we ever got clearance from the tower to be here. Okay, runway, that's the name of it. So we're gonna keep that. We can do the magnetometer scan. And Magnetic lines are continuously changing directions, almost as if someone is running in circles around the runway with a giant magnet. Okay, we're going to keep that. Delirium! Thank you very much. Uh, can't support your Patreon right now for the programming channel, but wanted to send you a little something to say thanks. If I had you as a tutor at uni, I might have stayed longer than a year. Oh, I understand your troubles. Trust me. Trust me, but thank you very much. Um, and yeah, I do have a Patreon set up for Quill 18 Creates, which is my game programming channel. I am doing a Unity tutorial on how to make a base building game, kind of like a RimWorld prison architect kind of thing, but in space. Um, and uh, already a few videos have gone up there. You can go to youtube.com slash Quill 18 Creates and just watch them. All the videos will be free. Uh, but the Patreon, which is patreon.com slash Quill 18 Creates, is going to help support those and make them happen. We've already hit the first two milestones. Like, we're good now. We're good. No, no pressure, guys. We got, we got it funded. We got the first milestone. So there's gonna be some programming live streams too. Anyway, uh, let me get the material study and the material goo. So we're gonna open those bad boys up and we're gonna keep all of those things. And we can do an EVA report here as well. So what I'm actually gonna do is I'm just gonna turn a little to the side. There we go. Actually, I'm gonna retract the, um, the boom here as well. Um, and I'm gonna EVA report. Whoa, it flung me out. There we go, EVA from here. Don't think a spacesuit was necessary. No, 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 no. And then we should be able to jump grab. Okay, good. What we're going to do is we're going to take that crew report and we're going to store it and the EVA. And it wouldn't surprise me if we could EVA again here. Nope, this counts as flying. Oh, because it's still the shores. Okay, so we will board this again. Excellent. So we've gotten all the, the, the signs that we can from the runway. Uh, MICDK, thank you very much for the resub. And now we're going to test the rotational structure of our vessel. We're just going to roll off to the side. And at some point right around there, we will no longer be on the runway. Instead, we will be on the grasslands. We do have to be a little bit, I shouldn't be quick saving. There we go. Can't quick save while we're moving on the surface. If we blow things up, we blow things up and people might die. 
Why me? An end of the month tip. Thank you very much, why me? Why you? Because you're awesome. Try not to let the speed get too high. I'm gonna keep it somewhere around one meter per second over here. As we just roll down this little slope, actually, take my hands off. Nope, it'll actually come to a stop, but just barely. Oh, now it's gonna get steeper. Now I actually have to stop it from rolling too quickly. Rolling, rolling, rolling. They see me rolling. They hating. Cause I'm so green and spacey. <gasps> Someone needs to make a Kerbal version of that. Hey, it's the moon. Right over there. We're coming to get you, moon. Very slowly. We're gonna roll our way to the moon. Pretty sure that something is possible. Okay, not really. And now we are officially not on the runway anymore. So, can try to stop with it pointing up. There we go, settle in there. Let's do a new crew report. Oh, this is technically TSC, it's not grassland. Excellent, uh, MDH, NYC. Basically I'm tipping because a tiny part of me dies every time magnetometer is pronounced wrong. Magnetometer, thank you. Um, so we're gonna keep that data. We're going to do this. I mean, I try to adhere to proper pronunciation, but you know, can't always do it. Hendrik, getting some whiskey tonight. You get yourself some either. Oh, then. good point. Running a little low on that Auchentotion. Uh, Goose seems bored. Yes, I'm sure everyone is bored watching me not go into space. Material shows a little signs of change, yada, yada, yada. Uh, we're gonna EVA over here. Whoa, it is flinging me backwards. I don't know what's going on. We're gonna EVA from uh, the Kerbin's shores. Let me go up over here. We're gonna do the same thing where we take all the data, we store all of it, and then from the KF KSC, there we go. Keep that data, reboard. Uh, we gotta grab first, and then reboard. And then we're gonna recover the vessel. This was a very successful mission. Very successful, tons of science. Now, there's lots of science to be had all over the KSC. Oops, this roly-poly thing is not gonna be the best way to go and collect it all though. We're gonna come back later with a better uh, rover. The test was successful, uh, but the report from Music Symbol is the downside is he gets very, very, very pukey um, because of all the spinning. So if we're gonna do more sciencing, we're gonna need sort of wheels instead of this. Uh, but the things stayed together. Music Symbol earned an achievement for getting 10 or more science, and he did a surface EVA, congratulations. We are now up to 46 science. We got a few more funds. Oh, that was just recovering things. And we got some XP there for Music Symbol. Excellent. So let's go and unlock some more tech over here. Um, we need, we need our first probe core. There we go. The Stay Putnik. Oh, we have just enough. It's going to cost 45 to unlock. We have 46.5. We are going to do this to unlock a probe core so we can do the mission with the, um, um, the unmanned thingy. Did it complete it? Oh, could it be manned or unmanned? Oh, the A3! I didn't realize you can do it manned. Okay, it was listed kind of funnily. All right, that's fine then. We're gonna wait for another historical one. There's not one up now. We'll get like V2 stuff and things relatively soon. Um, okay, I would definitely like to escape the uh, atmosphere soon. Let's take that one. I mean, we will want to orbit Kerbin too. It might be a little early for that. Although it expires in two days. I'm wondering about being safe to do that. Let's see. Uh, we're not gonna test this one with the escape velocity. Or orbiting Kerbin. We're gonna do easier ones. Um, that might autocomplete. The tough one with this heat shield test is your altitude. So you've got a six kilometer range to do this test where the speed also has to be exactly right. And that's pretty difficult to pull off. There's the V2 mission, excellent. Crew incomplete, unmanned incomplete. So we basically just have to send something to suborbital trajectory. Okay, let, let's take this, because we should do it sort of accidentally, assuming it's right. I don't know, we'll give it a go. Um, let's make sure, in case we get a crash, that we've got a little bit of a milestone there. All right. Boom, 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 boom. Better start planning for two programming live streams now. Yeah, that'll probably happen. I think two programming live streams would be a nice balance. You know, every other week we do a programming stream. Um, the big question mark is when do we when do we schedule the programming stream so that it works with the daily videos as well? Because I won't want to do the programming stream 
if the videos aren't up to date with where I am in the code, but sometimes I like pre, you know, pre doing some videos ahead of time. So we'll see. Anyway, so we can try some unmanned tech. Let's do it. Let's try a stay putnik over here. We won't sacrifice a Kerbal this time. Proper unmanned uh, run. We do have uh, some fuel tanks. So we'll do this. Well, you know what? No, let's not be wimps. Command pods. Oh, do we have a decoupler? Yes, we do. Good. All right. So we have our command pod over here. Do we have heat shields? We probably don't need a heat shield here because we're not really doing re-entry, but we're going to go and throw that on. So if we re-enter, this will soak heat um, and actually disintegrate before transferring the heat to the rest of the pod, which is a good thing. And of course, we're going to put a parachute on top of that. Now, I will probably... There's two ways you can work this. I'm going to assume this one's going to be a very science light thing. We're just going to do the test of the launch. We're going to complete some contracts. That's going to be okay. So a decoupler here. And then some gas tanks. And again, I could, I do have the fuel, the, um, the procedural liquid tank, but basically it would be the same as doing this for now. So that's going to be okay. And we only have one type of liquid engine, the Reliant here. Reliant. The downside with this thing is it doesn't actually steer. We can steer a little with the reaction wheels over here, but that's about it. This is actually going to be a little sketchy. And by a little, I mean a lot. And by a lot, I mean, if we're ever going to have someone die, it's probably going to be on this run. We do have some lightweight science, so I'm not going to bring the science junior in this one. It's a little heavy, although I could still do the science junior from the launch pad and get a bit of free science, but that won't be the run here. We're going to bring the two hot thermometer. It's really very inexpensive, or it's very light. It's a tiny little thing. And I'm going to install a Communitron 16 antenna so that when we are flying, uh, we'll be able to transmit our crew reports and the temperature data just in case we don't come back to Earth alive. All right, staging is good. Stage one, light engine. Stage two, decouple. Stage three, parachute. Excellent. We do have... Oh, you know what? Hold on. I'm talking about doing this because I'm worried about the parachute, but I have... I have radial chutes. So actually, no, we're okay. Because I can I can support more weight over here uh, by throwing on a couple of radial parachutes, like so. We're going to have excess parachutes. So we can carry extra weight with us. The parachutes will slow us down enough. Um, so let's get a Science Junior. And a goo canister... Goo canister is going to be a little unbalancy. I'm going to put a pair on, even though we may only need one. I'm going to put a pair of goo canisters on just for symmetry. And there we go. Technically, we got another experiment there, but I don't even know if you can use that within the atmosphere. So this will not leave the atmosphere. And that's okay. We're okay with this. We're just going to try to get a bit more science out of it. It's going to be fine. Team Fury Fires, thank you very much for the resub. Is there anything else we need? I don't think so. I think this will work, mostly. Um, so, what do you call it? You know what? This, you know what? This is still sort of flea. It's not using the flea engine, but it's going to be flea hopper mark two. Just goes up a little, then comes back down. This is going to go a lot higher than the last one. Um, wow, it's got a hell of a lot of thrust to weight as well. We could easily get a lot more out of this. All right, I'm going to call that good enough. It could still go quite a bit more, but this is going to be fine for this run. So our goal is we're going to take off. We're going to turn sideways relatively soon so that we end up in a bit of a parabola like this. We're not getting in space, but if we just go straight up and then straight down, the problem is while we're coming down, we're going to start from too high a spot for the parachutes to be useful. The air will be too thin. And by the time the air is thick enough enough for the parachutes to be useful, we're going too fast, the parachutes will rip off. So we're going to try to go sideways so that we can bleed off a little bit of speed just with air sort of compression and friction coming in from the side and then open up the chutes. We'll see if it works. So we need a pilot for this. We need a pilot who's never flown before. April Ryan. If there was ever a chance of a first casualty, this might be it. Uh, we are first thing we're going to do, though, is we're just going to do the thing where we go to the launch pad, we do science there. We're going to use our science um, materials bay. 
and then we're going to recover the ship, and then we're going to launch again. So, material study. Now, we do have an antenna, so I could transmit it, but you can see if you transmit, some things transmit for 100%. This will only transmit for a third of what I get if I bring it back. So, we're going to get do that, and then we've got a temperature scan. Same thing here. We only get about half from the transmitting, so we will go ahead and keep that. And then I'll recover. We'll get the science, which is fine. Bum, 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 bum. No ribbons awarded. Ah, it's okay. We got you. Uh, so the Flea Hopper Mark II with April Ryan and launch. These, the, honestly, this flight here is the one I most frequently fail on because getting the angle right is a little tricksy and it's actually like a lot sort of more clear if you're actually doing the space run. Okay, so we're going to hit Z for full throttle over here. Full throttle. T for the stability assist. She's a pilot. She can provide that. And launch. And we'll throttle back pretty quick, actually, because there is a lot of delta V here, or a lot of um, thrust away. So we're still accelerating quite quickly, which is good. And we're just going to pitch over. We're going to the right, slightly to the east over here, but not too much. I'm going to try to stay within the yellow circle already. It's really, really really quite hard actually. Oh, 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 So FAR makes the aerodynamics a lot more difficult. Let's science real quickly. I'm going to keep that. Now oh, let's launch again. That's fine. And keep that. And then kill it. Whoa! I did not expect us to fling apart, but that's because of the aerodynamic forces. So what happens? We stage that. We're not going too fast. Let me stage the parachutes. And then we can turn off the SAS. That's fine. Okay, so we're going to survive. But the mission, I mean, we've made a terrible mess and spent a bunch of money on modules that just flung themselves apart. So that's two things here were a result of FAR, the Ferrum Aerospace Mod or Aeronautics Mod, one or the other. Um, one, the aerodynamics are a lot more realistic and difficult to work with. And two, um, air pressure from the side will... Um, is more likely to rip apart your ship than you can in the standard uh, Kerbal Space Program. And yeah, I think you're right. I have to make the turn a little bit later in FAR. So what happens? You got your ship going straight up, right? And if it's moving straight up, so the wind is all going straight down, right? So the wind's going downwards. Your ship is going upwards, which is great. And you turn a little, and what happens? Now the wind is hitting your ship here, right? Because you're not pointing in exactly the same direction as you're moving. You're turning a little bit. It hits here, which can take it and do that. And now all of a sudden you've got all this fast wind hitting this way, which shatters your ship apart. So what you have to do is you've got to turn enough. And, you know, certainly you're getting that, that wind thing, but that, you know, based on thrust and um, your reaction wheels and your, um, your little fins at the bottom, that it's still f fighting to keep the ship stable enough that it's not flipping anymore, and then you can slowly turn things. Uh, we may have been better off going straight up and straight down, but we did get some new science over here. Uh, April Ryan's gotten herself a little bit of XP, which is great. We're going to land, and one of the easiest ways to make this work a little bit easier is when we get fins that actually are control surfaces and can turn and steer, that makes things a lot easier. These are tiny, tiny, tiny little fins. Um, and you can't, they don't have a control surface over there, so. Trumpet, thanks for the resub. I did say, this is the sort of mission here that is one of the most difficult, because the parts we have are not very good for turning, but if you don't turn, you're going to go straight up, straight down, and you'll be going too fast for your parachute. Well, I don't know, maybe not. Maybe we can actually air brake enough coming straight down. But hey, more science! We didn't do any ocean stuff yet, this is fantastic! Totally planned this. Hey, we didn't die, which is the important thing. We can get some more mystery goo. We'll have to land here again with a uh, materials base soon. We're going to collect that. Um, we've got another crew report over here, which we could transmit, but we're not going to need to. I'll just keep it. And we can do an EVA report here. And if I let go, I'm actually going to have to enter the water. There we go. And EVA report from the Kerbin Shores. And it's very likely that I will not be able to get back on here. Oh, maybe. Whoa, that's lucky. Board. Woohoo. It doesn't matter. You can still recover them separately. But there we go. We'll recover the vessel. We'll get a little bit of science. And then we can unlock maybe something that'll help with this. Bum, 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 bum. 
April 1, look at this. So she got her first mission, she got her science award, uh, EVA ribbon, splashdown, vessel in water, and a G-Force 3, she, she took three Gs. We have 46 science, which is more than enough to unlock some more stuff, excellent. Um, stability might be useful. In fact, that's one of the issues that we did run into over here. We can also get some nose cones, which are handy. Uh, we could spend all of it on flight control, which would give us winglets that can turn and twist a little bit, which is nice. Get some more reaction wheels. We could spend it... You know what? I'm going to go for the stability, because it'll also give me enough for general rocketry, which very importantly gives us the swivel liquid fuel engine. So one of the things with the, um, the engine we just used, it has no swivel. So it doesn't help in steering at all. We've now got one with some gimbling. And what the gimbling means... Do we have another mission that we can take? No, we're full, right? We got, we got two of two? Yeah, two of two. The gimbling means um, that the engine actually can turn a little bit in itself. So it can thrust a little bit sideways. So we should be able to make a much more stable thing. We've also got bigger fuel tanks here, which can lessen the chance that things will sort of shatter apart. So we're going to do that. If I did use the procedural liquid tank... Uh, my length, again, will sort of be limited by what I have available here, so it doesn't really make a difference one way or to other. And we'll go a little bit more straight up. You know what we can do for... The longer your ship is, too, the more um, susceptible you are to the forces. So the swivel engine here, you can see, has a gimbal, a vectoring range of 4.5 degrees. So it will actually twist and help you steer that. And then we've got slightly bigger winglets. These are still not... Um, not real control surfaces, like they don't twist and turn, but again, these will try to keep our nose pointed in the direction that we're actually moving. So I think we're gonna do the exact same flight here, and we'll use the next person on the flight roster. We only have two, uh, two pilots? We do, let's go and generate some more pilots. We need a bigger pool of pirates. So back to my subscriber list. Uh, da, 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 da. So, boom. We are going to have pulling tractor over to the junior. Uh, we'll go back to male. And of course, my audience. Oh, that was weird. Maximum courage, maximum stupidity. Uh, and we don't know what type of um, person they're going to be. Pilot, engineer, whatever it is. Um, sort of hashed from the name. Or to use more popular terminology, it's procedurally generated. It's not really. The Everix. Maybe another one over there. And we'll do one more. I get like three pilots. Hey, it's Kitty Cat. Kitty Cat 3000. Boom. Kitty. Female. There we go. Um, boom. So hopefully we got another pilot. If not, well, congratulations, someone's going to get the fly again. But do 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 boop boop. We only got one more, it's the Everix. All right. I mean, statistically, one and three. So, it's pretty much there. All right, so we have that. We have a new flight. I'm going to give that a try. April's probably recovering from the 3G forces. Actually, 3G's, 3G's not very much for an astronaut. But still, I mean, these... um. Turn the winglets? Oh, turn them so that they uh, they spin? Yeah, you can do that. All right. Parachutes, everything sorted out. SAS, turn on. Go. And yeah, we'll go, we'll make the gravity turn a little later, a little slower. If we're going a little faster, yeah, the side forces are a little bit more buffery, but at the same time, the winglets are going to be a little bit stronger. Okay, I like this pace of acceleration. We're accelerating, but not insanely quickly. And I'm going to slowly nudge over, and I'm trying to stay within the yellow circle. The yellow circle is the direction that we are, yeah, see these bigger winglets really push me back. Really push me back. This is a lot more stable, this one. And I have a little bit more control and stability with the SAS turned on with the gimbling engine. So the yellow circle is the direction you're moving, and of course, the, you know, the center of the nav ball is the direction you're pointing. So if the two match, okay, we're approaching Mach 1, um, which, there we go. I think technically we have surpassed that. Although, correct me if I'm wrong, does the speed of sound not go up the higher you are, or go down, or is it stable? I don't know. Anyway, we are definitely uh, transonic now. I think we can probably throttle up. We're quite high. Okay, now I, what I'm going to try to do is go pretty aggressively sideways. If we spin, it's not the end of the world. 
Uh, what I don't have is my. Oh no, my orbit isn't supposed to there. We might just. You can see the direction of the wind here. No, just shy of going suborbital. We need to have an apoapsis above 70,000 uh, to actually enter space. So we're not going to go there. We are in the high atmosphere, though. It's our first time in the upper atmosphere, so we get a new round of science. I'm going to go ahead and just transmit the crew report because I can, although I don't have that much battery life. Um... All right, just keep it. Keep, 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 keep. Because I didn't bring any batteries, and transmitting uses a lot of science. I did want it just in case, but there we go. Alright, so there's no reason to keep the engines around, or to keep the SAS turned on. So we'll eject this, and now we're just curious to see where we will land. And hopefully, right now we have an orbital velocity of 900 meters per second, a surface velocity of a little over 700 meters per second. To safely deploy the parachutes, generally speaking, you normally want to be below 250 meters per second. It's a little different with FAR. In fact, without FAR, the parachutes on the side here will be red if it's unsafe to open them. Then it'll go back to the silvery color or green? Silvery, when it is safe to open them. Um, but with FAR, it's not like that because I think it's a little bit fuzzier. Okay, ideally we want our butt end to be going forward at this point and because that's our heat shield being the fact that we didn't go into orbit, we don't have as much speed to blow to burn off, there's actually not going to be that much heat. We don't actually need uh, the heat shield. But ideally, we're going to be more aerodynamically stable with this end facing in to the, um, the airstream, although I suspect it's very unlikely um, that it would be. We'll probably have to use the FCS and a little bit of manual control to make sure we're facing the right way the whole time. There we go. Mm -hmm. Speed of sound is the permanent density of the material it passes through. Yeah, and the elast elastic modulus of said materials. So, like, yeah. Does denser make it slower or faster? Someone probably said it. Mox is dominated by temperature, faster when hotter, and density. Both make it slower or higher. <coughs> so, yeah. The speed of sound, both make it slower. Higher. So the denser it is, the slower it is. So the speed of sound is a lot higher in light atmosphere, which is what makes sense because, as well, when you're moving, you're not really hitting the same sort of shock front with less air up top. So does the actual Mach number change, or is Mach a constant based on the speed of sound at the surface? I don't know. But yeah, presumably, being uh, 50 kilometers above the surface of the Earth, the speed of sound is a lot higher than, what, 330 meters per second, somewhere around there? I don't know. Greg and... Ball, thank you very much for the resub and sub. Thanks, guys. Bum, 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 bum. <laughs> Sencha says she's got a cold place on her head now, what, with all the talk of speed of sound. Higher density means higher speed of sound? Is it? I don't know. We'll figure it out. Okay, so we're coming back down. Let me go and... Whoops. No! Almost. Come on, you can do it. Swing around the other way. Swing. Trying to keep my butt end. Well, it doesn't really matter. Either way, we slowed down enough. But I failed to keep my butt end there. Which would be dangerous if we were actually getting burning effects, but we're not. I try to go a little sideways. We'll get a little bit more sort of surface going on here. Actually, even like this, unless it like knocks off my, my goo canisters, that would be bad. But just trying to catch a little bit more air. And as soon as our surface speed drops around 250, I will deploy the chutes. And there we go. In fact, I can wait a little bit longer. Play with a bit of fire. We've still got 8 kilometers to drop. We're above the sea, so we don't have to worry about smacking at the mountains. So I can be patient with opening the parachute. And this will land us sooner. We'll just turn off the SAS completely. 6... Five. Four. Could even time accelerate this. We got a long way to fall. All right, the Evericks. Now you're just in free fall, so you're experiencing microgravity within the canister. It's basically like the Vomit Comet. Oh, there's some debris or something over there. All right, three kilometers to go. I think I'll go ahead and deploy the chutes. 
They don't fully deploy until they're one kilometer above the ground, though. They won't puff out. They'll slow us down a wee bit. It's from about 220 to about 110, so about half to our speed. And then, yeah, when we cross the one kilometer mark um, above the surface, which in this case is sea level, so that works out, uh, they will fully deploy. And with three of them, I expect to drop to around four, maybe five meters per second. Hopefully below six. There we go. I believe the uh, materials bay can um, support a collision of up to six meters per second. I'm just going to quick save here before time warping. I will always quick save before time warping because every now and again something goes horribly, horribly wrong when you time warp and then you want to be able to refresh from that. You know, just technical issues. Um, when we land, well, we already have info from the, uh, the ocean. So I don't think there'll be any more science for the Everix to get. I think uh, April Ryan has already taken care of all that. FAR also adds body lift effects to pretty much everything. Yep, that is true. So normally in Kerbal Space Program, only wings actually supply any lift. But in FAR, it does model certain lift effects from absolutely everything um, on your ship. Some of it helps, some of it doesn't. Some of it helps when you want to build a plane and hurts when you're trying to build a spaceship or vice versa. All right, there we go. Let's deep time warp. Oh, no, maybe, okay, that last one might have been Shores, and this one is Ocean, because it is telling me there's some EVA to be had here. Mystery Goo from Kerbin's Water, we're going to keep that. So let me EVA, EVA report again from flying over Kerbin's Water. We're going to take that data. I'm going to take everything. I'm going to board another crew report from here. We will keep that. I will then EVA into the water. So I've got this one, right? Because it's actually from the water, as opposed to flying over it. But isn't that the same thing I just did? You know, I have another mod. It tells me what science I haven't done here. Well, you know what? The only thing it could be... Not that. That's literally the one I did. Let's just compare from the actual water. Woo! Let's take that just in case. Oh! Buoyancy. How does it work? <laughs> Bling! All right. Let's re re we'll just recover them individually. Instead of trying to board back in.